Hello, Zero K fans, and welcome to the April 2016 2-2 tournament. And we're just still waiting a little bit for some of the players, but we are going to be starting out pretty shortly. Not sure what the first map's going to be, but... All right, let's see. So the opening bracket is going to be Flores Nel Terrero versus Sprung and Hokomoko, Anarchist and Base versus OGS and Norm, or Old Goat Stalker and Norm 616, Kshatri and Anir versus 400 Average Plan, and Baladoom Diamond Friend versus Spring and Don. And I think I'm going to start off... Hmm. I really want to see Flores Nel Terrero versus Sprung and Hokomoko, so I'm going to start off with them. I can find them. Let's see, where are they? Although, I think... Yeah, okay, Flores is here, El Torado is here, Hokomoko is here, and Sprung is here. Okay, everyone's here. No? What's going on? Okay. Alright, we got it sorted out, so I know where people are going. Yeah. So that is going to be the first match we're going to cast, and I... Don't know what the opening map is. It actually wasn't really mentioned in the thread, was it? Nope. There is actually a specific map list, though. Unlike most tournaments, most the old one-day tournaments, we just did any featured map. This is going to be a bit different. We're actually doing a list of maps. But I think... I think we're starting on Cold Snap from the looks of it. I'm not totally sure. The map, the current... That's currently set, but I don't know. Anyway, once that gets actually set up, then we'll get that all sorted. But it looks like... It looks like it will be Cold Snap. Oh, never mind. They actually do decide. So, as a side note, this is also best of one. So this is actually, this is one game, what will happen is Swiss Bracket being Swiss Bracket, you play a game, and then the next match is whoever has a similar score to you, you get paired with them, and then do that a couple times. The top four will move on to an elimination bracket, a standard, I believe, single elimination bracket, and the winner of that is the winner of the tournament. Bit of a different format than usual, normally it was just straight double elimination, or before that single elimination. But this time, it is a Swiss into brackets, because that way... Okay, we've just about got everyone sorted for the game. That way, it's easier to get people to play more games, and it's easier from there to get the people in the brackets who are going to be able to get through, I guess. I don't know. I like the idea of Swiss into brackets. It was also partly an idea of maybe having the bottom four also go off to their own bracket, but at this point, it's just top four. Go into an elimination bracket, and that finishes off the tournament. So, Swiss round is just about to begin. Once they get the map sorted, and also get the team sorted. Yeah, this will be interesting. So we have Flores and El Torero, which... Flores, I haven't seen play in a little while, but we should all know Flores. Flores often co-commentates with me, and hopefully... Well, okay. If they... I guess if they don't get into the bracket stage, then I'll see if they'll co-commentate. That'd be cool. I really enjoy having co-commentators, so we'll see. And are they going to be going on Skull Snap? I think they are. It's up to the players to decide what map they want to play on. And like I said, there is just one match, so they kind of have to be careful. Also, there is a time limit. The tournament, unlike most of the tournaments for 0k, this one actually will have a time limit. So instead of the match going on however long, the match goes on for 30 minutes. It's going to be interesting. Basically, it's 25 minutes... After 25 minutes, it's 
whoever, if a team has twice the opponent's units count in metal. So basically, whatever the deluxe player list widget would say for metal count for armies, that's what that determines what goes on after at 25 minutes. If they if there is no two times advantage, if they're close or relatively even, then it's another five minutes continuation until it gets to 30 minutes. And then at 30 minutes, it's either a draw if there's no advantage still, or if there is an advantage, the advantageous team wins, or then, of course, potentially the game just gets ended by resign. But yeah, if there's no resignation, it's a matter of metal advantage. Pretty simple rule there. Okay, it's actually really complicated. <laughs> but yeah, that's that's what it'll come down to is having two times the unit value in metal than your opponent at 25 minutes or resignation. Or smashing every single one of your opponent's buildings to just or units and buildings and completely wiping them out. Which never happens in practice. So yeah, resignation or twenty-five minutes and advantage or thirty minutes and two times advantage. And it looks like we are doing it on Cold Snap. All right. Getting into the game, finally. Not too delayed. Actually, this is relatively quick compared to most. Really, most of the tournaments have been like 10, 15 minutes delayed at the start. This is only about five minutes. So, well done. So Cold Snap, this map, for those of you who aren't familiar, and I imagine a lot of you aren't because this is not a super popular map on my casts, but then again, it is a relatively popular map in practice. This map, as you can see, is fairly hilly, very mountainous, has basically got three lanes. The north lane with a geothermal plant, middle lane that favors vehicles to an extent, and the south lane with the ice lake that gets smashed up very rapidly. This, I think, has, I think it might have a deformation map. I'm fairly certain that the ice lake is actually more vulnerable to deformation than the rest of the map. I don't know for sure. That's the impression I've gotten. I haven't checked the actual files. Yeah, oftentimes what you'll see is either player in center and bottom, or if they're feeling really risky, north and bottom, north and south. Almost always south, though. It's rare that you get someone going just north and middle. Because going north and mid is kind of risky. I mean, you're dealing with essentially having no ice lake presence and that's a pretty open area i mean when you consider that this is a hilly area you'd have to walk up if you don't have defenses there your opponent could just go up there and not worry about it but we'll see the two the players are setting up and there's there's a lot of mumble chat going on they're not going to be chatting in game they are on mumble because mumble is kind of the way to go when it comes to this sort of thing. You want to have your chat private. That, and no one can actually hear the spectators in the lobby because spectators are muted. Good rule, I say. Because, frankly, it gets a little bit annoying. I mean, it's kind of nice to have the peanut gallery, sort of, but it can cause problems. I mean, I, I think spectators can hear each other, more importantly. So, yeah. Spectators can play each other, or can talk to each other, I think, but they cannot talk to the players. Okay, so a bit of technical problems coming in here, apparently. El Torero having a bit of a hard time loading. I can totally sympathize with that. That's why this is on an SSD. <laughs> shifted, I shifted 0K onto a solid-state hard drive because it takes way too bloody long to load on a standard hard drive. Now, I'm not sure if it's that my main hard drive is starting to fail, or if it's just that it's taking forever to load, because I'm the only one with loading issues. Everyone seems to have loading problems right now, or loading time problems. And it... Okay, this is... Yeah. Alright. So much for that. So let's start that again. With the actual match. 
Hopefully El Torero has now loaded and it's all cached and they're gonna be much faster this time. That's usually, I find, how it goes. The first load takes forever. Well, not after putting on my SSD, mind you, but if you're not in an SSD, the first load takes forever and every subsequent load has gotten pre-cached enough that it's no big deal. At any rate, that will hopefully be addressed. Hopefully, I mean, this is really kind of problematic. Oh, El Torero's using a start script? That's strange. Apparently, that I think that's apparently something instead of lobbies? Oh, I see. They're trying to put it into another windowing process. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Sort of. Another excerpt for performance and... What? Okay, I don't know enough about Linux works to know why you'd have a second X server to improve performance. I would figure they'd be using the same hardware and it wouldn't really matter, but whatever. What do I know? Anyway. Now we're going to be able to get to the game proper for real. El Torero probably going to be able to load it quickly enough. All right, so still looks like it's going to take a little while for the loading to happen. That's a bit of an annoying thing. Apparently, people have been having issues with loading with the most recent spring version, and that's a problem. Although, El Torero loaded in. All right, we're good. We just need to wait for sprung, and then we'll be able to start. So, yeah, as I was saying, this map, it's big. It is kind of lane-focused. It has a lot of terrain deformation that happens in the south, which makes vehicles difficult to use, despite the fact that this ice lake is flat. And, of course, the north side is a bit more bot-oriented due to it being really hilly and everything. But I can't really comment more until people actually place their markers down. Where are people going to start? That's what I want to know. All right, so with the game about to begin, we actually have positions. Or do we have positions? We have commander selected, but no positioning yet. Everyone's still discussing positions, so we'll work that out when we get to it. All right. Okay. Well, let's get the show on the road, then. It looks like people are about to start. Sprung and Okamoko both south? Okay, there we go. That's something different. Gunship and Clokibot Factory. This is a cheese build, which, I mean, this is best of one. I am not at all surprised. Cheese builds are gonna happen. So yeah, Okamoko and Sprung going for a cheese build. El Torero going a bit center, basically center. Flores not yet selected their position. Their cursor is to be believed. They look like they're probably going to be shifting a bit towards the... Oh, no, back center. Okay, probably air. I'm going to guess they're going for air. El Torero's going probably for light vehicles. We have Cloaky protecting gunship. And are we doing drop? Well, warriors are coming out for sprung. Yes, we're doing a right off the bat warrior drop. Blastings as well for the extra scouting at the start. And Rapier coming in from Flores. Gunship. Gunship Cloaky as well on the eastern side. But El Torero not going for the warrior drop. Sprung and Hokomoko are going for that warrior drop. One warrior up. Second warrior up. Third warrior should be up in a moment. This is going to be interesting. I mean, Blastwing coming in is revealing a gunship's coming in. But I don't know if they're expecting a warrior drop. Because I think what's more important is that the information is there for the Western team. They know that the Eastern team's basically doing the same thing. Double check. Okay, they know the gunship's up. They don't know that the Cloakie's there. So they know that there is a gunship plan for Floris. They probably won't worry about it because, quite frankly, 
Three warriors coming in here. How's this gonna work? Probably fairly well. This could actually end really quickly. I kind of hope it doesn't end too quickly, because Swiss being the way it is, that would kind of leave me waiting. Or jumping into another game halfway through. But it looks like Hokomoko and Sprung might not actually be able to pull this off. Yeah, some retreating happening. No, the Warriors... Oh no, going deeper into territory. They're really going for the Commanders. Sheesh, that's... Okay, one of the Warriors for the Factory, the other one for the Commander. Looks like the drop is not successful. But not to the point that Western team is going to resign. So now we have a game going. Opening drops, opening cheese, into a proper game. I like that! That's pretty cool! Okay, I can get behind that. I mean, really, okay, yeah, it's a bit of... I mean, it's failed cheese, yes, but it's kind of cool going from cheese into a proper game. Because, I mean, hey, you're going to want to try cheese on a best of one as long as you win. It doesn't matter how. It's not like you have to worry about your opponents getting wise to your tactics. You just go. You just do. It works. It's awesome that way. But in this case, we are going to have a bit of a longer game, which is fine. I mean, that was pretty well defended. It was well defended enough. I'm pretty impressed. Because, I mean, El Torero and Flores, they basically stopped with their commanders alone, which is pretty impressive, all things considered. Well, okay, not Commanders alone. They had a couple Rapiers as well, which worked out quite nicely. Warriors do not have a whole lot of HP, so that did the trick. Now Hokomoko trying it into Banshee and Sides for Sprung. They've already started building a couple of these. First one's about to hit, and Trident's getting rid of the Rapiers, trying to clear up the sky. I doubt another Warrior drop is forthcoming, but at the same time... Clearing up the sky is never a bad idea. And El Toledo's commander under some threat. Not a huge amount. Good thing for it is a support com. It, or not support com, it's a recon com. It can jump. It can get out of there. And it looks like the overall sky is... Ooh. Tick over to the north just in case. But yeah, it looks like the skies are under western team's control more or less. Yeah, I don't see Flores with any other rapiers up right now. And, oh, the commander's down! El Torero losing their commander right off. This is a disadvantage for the Eastern team. We aren't at the point where it's not really meaningful. This is a pretty significant disadvantage. So at this point, Eastern team holding their own decently well. Actually, ooh, nice anti-air. Going for the gremlins. Not going for the tridents. Very wise there. We saw in an earlier game on... Tuesday. Yeah. Last Tuesday I casted a game. The preview tournament preview essentially. And that involved a game where that was Trident versus Trident. That didn't work too well. This on the other hand with the Gremlins against the Tridents that's how you want to do it. Get your ground based anti-air to deal with the air based anti-air. It all works out. And Eastern team continue to hold their own. I mean at this point Eastern team back to the economic advantage. They still have Reclaim. They had the Recon Commander Reclaim to work with. So all the harassments, while they've been exciting, haven't actually led to a significant advantage. And the north half of the map almost completely unspoiled. And what has been spoiled has been taken by the eastern team. So the western team hasn't even really looked there. I mean, I guess they were really going for the cheese and didn't think, oh, hey, maybe Floris is going to expand over the northwest, given that Floris is going for gunships. But the south is pretty well under western team's control. Right, they've got the ice lake. I have some cranes here that aren't really doing anything yet. Oh, what am I saying? They're doing reclaim. Very important thing to do. I'm a bit surprised that the Eastern team hasn't really noticed this, though. I mean, I guess their radar doesn't go north enough, but why are they not checking north? And, ooh, what is... Ah, okay. Hokomoko going for Amphib, which is the Hokomoko thing to do, because Hokomoko always goes for Amphib. How much reclaim do they have there? Ah, there we go. Oh. Okay, 300 metal reclaim. I think that the that Western team took about 150 metal of that, which is pretty good. And Flora's going for light vehicles as well. So we have now light vehicles added in and Amphib added in. And the north side finally getting found out. There is still the tick here, but that tick is not going to be a major concern. 
Like, there's no follow-up unit, so the tick's gonna go off, get rid of the duck, or stop the duck. The duck's gonna be stunned for a couple seconds, but that's fine, because there's no follow-up. But no further ducks over to the northwest, and a lot of lotuses, so Floris making sure that they have less than, well, more than naked expansion. Better defended expansion than just nothing. That's what they want, of course. Main base going in. Okay, levelers coming in. Probably going to try to get rid of these glaives outright with the levelers. Although, given that we're dealing more with warriors and ducks, are we getting... is another drop coming in? Seems unlikely. A lot of ducks coming in, though. Loads of ducks. This is actually kind of scary. We just have a stream of ducks with a few banshee support going to the northeast. Now, granted, the northeast is not the best defended area, or not the most important area, but it's still not well defended. It's not the best defended area. The northwest is better defended than the northeast, really, for the eastern team. And another assault from the south, so eastern, western team just attacking on all fronts. And leveler trying to do its level best, but it's not going to be able to do enough. Not against that many ducks. Especially not with the Banshee support. It's gonna help, but it's not enough. One leveler doesn't do the trick. A few levelers would do pretty well, actually, though. And south side, still getting pretty heavily attacked. Sprung coming in to reclaim... Are they reclaiming? Looks like they probably will at some point. I mean, their commander's right there. It's not upgraded. I'm guessing it's entirely for economy purposes. Is it for economy versus? Well, it's definitely for defense purposes. I'm trying to block off this area. I'm getting some defenders up. Not, unfortunately, well prepared for dealing with these glaives. And the north side of the ducks just bearing down. This is probably going to end pretty soon. I mean, the western team has taken the north. The eastern team had the control, but they've lost it. They didn't really expand clo They didn't put enough clothing on their expansions to the north, meaning they are going to be overrun, potentially. What the... Interesting. Western team retreating. Why are they retreating? And with that many ducks, they'd probably be able to just get in and destroy everything. 18 ducks already. Yeah, that's huge. And on top of that, the south side getting hit hard. Flores putting up a couple lotuses, but that's not going to be enough. And decent harassment coming in over from Sprung. Nice tick! Brilliant tick usage! I'm not sure if that's why the Hokomoka was a bit hesitant about attacking the base, but that would definitely be a good reason. There we go! Some break for the Eastern team! Might actually be able to get through this, because that was a really well-valued tick. I, that must have been about 10 ducks. Very well done. Of course, all the reclaim coming in as well. That could very well just get them on par, actually. Yeah, between the commander reclaim over to the south and the reclaim of all these ducks, because this is... Yeah, if you're in a metal reclaim, that's going to last a little while. Well done. Like, that's going to be a minute with this worker here, and it's probably going to be more coming in to help, but still. Eastern team, not quite that far behind anymore. And looks like Flora's trying to get overdrive to the northwest, while the center being pushed. Nice leveler and slasher push. This should work pretty well against the Banshee forces. And by pretty well, I mean completely wiping them out, because that is Flex AA and, well, Banshees, as mentioned before, don't do especially well against Riot units. So there we go. Of course, Lone Duck coming in, which should be taken out by the Rapier, no problem. Eastern team might be able to get their footing again. Brawl over to the Northwest, though, it's gonna cause some issues. There's no easy way to stop this either. I mean, the Western team is going to want to get Floris out of the northwest. That's really was a cheeky move from Floris. They should be able to eventually. Floris will be able to hold on to this for a little bit longer. Of course, maybe not, because if the gremlins coming in, maybe Floris will be able to hold on to this indefinitely. Yeah, the gremlins are going to be able to get in here, and they should be able to get rid of the brawler. The crane's down, mind you, but the metal extractors are not. Actually, this brawler, wow, okay, how about that? Ducks can be in for extra support, but with the ground forces on top of that, that brawler, is it's gonna go down! Although, ducks are here to help out. Still, that's, that's very effective. Over to the center, another brawler getting attacked, and more forces coming in through the center for Western team. As well as a cloaked assault over to the south. 
Sprung trying to finish this off with a, a racer warrior rush or a racer warrior push, I should say. But at the same time, like I said, Eastern team, they've reclaimed their territory. Their economy is not that weak anymore. They still have the Northwest. They managed to save that. And the Cloaked Assault has been revealed, or at least the fact that there will be a Cloaked Assault has been revealed. Where they are exactly is still total, not totally clear because, you know, cloaked. But the fact is, cloaking is here. And the Warriors were not in range when they started fire. Oh, actually, they weren't in range enough. That didn't work out too well for the Rockos. And another Brawler trying to stop the Northwest, but yeah, this is a problem. And another Crane could go over to the Northwest. It looks like it is on its way, actually. Yes, it is. Also, trying to take the Geo Plant from the looks of it. Well, definitely going towards the Geo Plant. Western team continuing to push into the north pretty hard. The south, Cloak push is about to come in. The north push for the Ducks. Getting pushed back. The Rapiers putting a stop to that. The boys putting a stop to the Rapiers. Because boys do pretty well against Rapiers. And the Sharpshooter just being a thorn in Western Team's side. But given that West Team's not going for a lot of heavy units, no Grizzlies yet, none under production, entirely boys and ducks, not a big deal. And the Cloak Stack has started to hit. Getting rid of the Rocco's tick working against them too. Although, another tick in perfect position. There we go. Stopping those Warriors dead in their tracks, leaving Sprung's Commander as the only offensive force in there. With Stingers and Lotuses working against them, this is not working out for Sprung. Those ticks, those ticks. El Torero, your tick usage has been just about divine this game. Like, very well done. Unfortunately, four Brawlers coming in will be able to take out Flores' Commander with no issue. But so went Sprung's Commander, so really... Wait, did it? No, it didn't. Sprung's Commander managed to escape. El Torero and... Sp and Hoke, sorry, El Torero and Flores now have both lost their commander. That's eight metal per second that the Eastern team does not have. That is a huge deal. Northwest still have. Northeast has been taken again. Boys over to the Northeast taking out more metal extractors. Eastern team has not managed to catch a long enough break that they've been able to really rebuild and get a powerful counterforce going. On the other hand, Western team has had an economic advantage that they've managed to really transform into a military advantage. I mean, those ticks, El Torero's tick usage has been great. It's been helping them. It looks like it's going to be a come-from-behind victory every single time that happens. I mean, they're not going down without a fight. That's for sure. And the Brawlers can't really get in either, thanks to all the anti I mean, all these gremlins. How many gremlins are there? Five gremlins. I think those are the same five gremlins that have been the same five gremlins for the rest of the game. I mean, this entire game has been gremlins. But no, Floris, pretty sure they can't make it. Throwing in the tail. I mean, that's, a pretty, that's a pretty big assault. No ticks in position. And that is Western Team taking that. Hokamoko and Sprung moving on to the next round with a win, whereas El Ferrero and Floris getting a loss. Well done, though. I must say, that was an interesting game, so yeah. Flores and El Torero down one, Sprung and Hokomoko up one. This is... how many more games... I'm curious how many games there are going on right now, because it looks like... We might actually be starting another one due to people coming in late. Not totally sure, it looks like the Kshatriya Anir game is... We're still waiting for people, apparently. No subs so far. A little bit unusual. Let's just double check what's going on. Looks like... Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Well... It would look like we have... And you're not showing. So, Kshatra and Nor... Do we have 400 average plan showing? Not sure how that's going to work. Shatria can't just move on. I mean, we have to basically sub for any and maybe for 400 and average plan. And then from there, it'll be a matter of playing that out. Not sure what the standings are for the rest of the matches, though. Looks like... Oh. Oh, average plan is hanging out in a different room. Okay, they need to get out of there. 
And Anior hasn't shown up yet, so Average Planet's here. 400 apparently is not here. Why is Average Planet in the tournament room? All right, we'll have to sort that out eventually. Oh, there we go. Okay, now we've got it sorted out. Here's the proper bracket. So Sprung and Hokomoko have won a match. Flores and El have lost a match. Baladum versus Dynefront, they won. And we have Drone and Average Plan against Norman Drone? That must be against Norman Kshatriya, I'm guessing. So we have dropped a team. Well, should, should say we've dropped two teams. But that's a bit surprising. Why don't we drop two teams? So right now, yeah. These are the scores right now. We do have, like I said, apparently two fewer teams. I'm surprised. Anarchid was in here, but then Anarchid mentioned they wouldn't be able to stay the entire time. Okay, this is weird. The brackets are getting a bit wonky right now. I'm not sure what's going on. Anyway, we'll just turn turn off the game sound for now. Anyway, so yeah, we'll get to... Getting that in a moment. Not sure what's... Stupid windows. What is going on here? Stupid. What is going on? Sorry, I'm smacking my microphone with my headphones. Okay, Norman Anarchid. So what happened to Kshatriya then? Because Kshatriya was playing as far as I know. Well, that's weird. Anyway, we'll get that sorted out. So stay tuned. Be back with another match in just a bit.